When we returned to the conference room, an olive green blanket lay lengthwise down the center of the table. Doyle told us that Larry's remains were inside. I went numb. Finally, I was alone with my husband. I placed my hands on the table. A deep, guttural sound erupted from me. Tears streamed as I moved my hands onto the wool blanket. Lightly and gently, with palms wide open, I pressed down until I felt the solid hardness of bones. Larry, tell them I want them to unwrap the blanket. Are you sure, Mother? Laura asked. My mind reeled back to 1971 when I'd first learned Larry was dead. My nine-year-old self had saved me then. Today, Larry's and my daughter was there if I needed her. Yes, is it okay with you or do you want to leave? I'm fine either way, I'll get them. Laura moved to the door. The entire group stepped back into the conference room. Doyle said, I'll do it for you. He moved to the table and gently undid each safety pin, holding Larry's bones secure inside. Then he gently unfolded and spread the top of the blanket onto the table, leaving Larry's bones visible, but still snug in the blanket. When Daddy died, I'd moved a stool up to his casket, stood on it, and kissed him goodbye. Now, I stood facing Larry's bones, encased in plastic bags. I laid my hands on the remnants of my husband. An electric charge vibrated throughout my body and up my spine, and I saw him there in front of me, grinning from ear to ear. His blue eyes sparkling, his blonde hair shining, both dog tags hanging around his neck. I slept with these bones, I turned and said to Laura. These are your father's. Laura moved beside me and put her arm around my waist. Are you ready, mother? Our tears mingled as we hugged and I nodded yes. <laughs>